let me do a PhD in natural language. And I don't think he's ever had one since. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm going to talk about is the marriage between language and Bayesian networks. So this is my intellectual heritage. So I was around when Judea developed Bayesian networks. And in fact, he tells me I'm the first person that ever worked it out on pencil, in pencil and paper. I still have that homework. And I was also around when Professor Wallace uh, developed the minimum, minimum message length principle that, um, well, it's a principle for model selection. My own research is different. It's in language technology and user modeling. But to combine all of the above, uh, what I'm going to talk about today is about the interpretation of people's arguments as when they argue with you, not as in parameter passing, uh, in the context of a Bayesian network. So we did this in a system that we called BIAS, Bayesian Interactive Argumentation System. And it's built upon a Bayesian network. And the idea of the system was originally uh, people get some information, then they enter an argument, bias interprets the argument and argues back. Now, the part of arguing back is grayed out because the funding ran out. So bias interprets the argument, and that's the end of that. <laughs> <laughs> and now this goes back to my heritage. The first example that Judea came up with, or one of the first, was a murder mystery. I've never gotten over that one. So I'm still working on murder mysteries. So here is an example of an argument that would be generated by a person. Now, this is the, a very simple example that is still somewhat interesting. So you have something like this. Since Mr. Green probably was in the garden at 11, he, probably had, he possibly had the opportunity to kill Mr. Body, but he possibly did not murder Mr. Body. Something we would like to be able to interpret. So what does it mean that we are interpreting this argument? In general, an interpretation of anything is a representation of what somebody is telling you in terms of your own beliefs. Now, it's anybody's guess whether you are understanding what you are being told, right? You are told what you are told. You understand what you understand. And we hope that we all understand each other. If the addressee is a computer, then the same rules apply. What does it mean that the computer can understand your argument? It means that it developed its own understanding in its own terms. And again, this may not be necessarily what you intended, but this is as good as it gets. So in our case, we have a, OK, the user said that. We've already seen that argument. And this is actually what we are able to come up with. And you have the bits that bias has filled in in a different color. So what bias is saying, your argument makes sense to me if I add all these bits. And what are these bits? Assuming that the time of death was 11, Mr. Green probably being in the garden at 11 implies that he pro probably was in the garden at the time of death. Hence, he possibly had the opportunity to kill Mr. Body, but he did not have the means. So he, pro he possibly did not murder Mr. Body. Is that close? And you hope the user says yes. And please know that I've aligned the originals as best I could. So the question is, OK, how do we get this? So we have three main elements to an interpretation. The first element is an interpretation graph. So this is a subnet of the Bayesian network. And in this subnet, we want to bridge any gaps that the person may have put. Now again, the, the system will bridge the gaps as best as it knows how. It may not necessarily be the bridges intended by the user, but this is the only bridges it has. Second, supposition configuration. People make suppositions that they don't necessarily state. If you want to make sense of what I'm saying, you might say, oh, she's probably supposing this. And then it all falls into place. 
So that's something else we need to add if we want to make sense of what people say. And finally, explanatory extensions. Now that came out of left field a bit. We did trials with people, as one does in my line of work. And it turned out that people object to certain inferences. They object if there is an increase in certainty. So you cannot go to a, from a probably to a very probably. People find that very offensive. And you cannot have large changes in belief. You cannot go from a possibly to a possibly not. Again, people are very offended by such things. So if you want to have such modifications, you need to have something in place to alleviate them. So now if we look at the color, so we have a blue, a green, and, an, and a mustard or orange. You can find them all here. The light blue is the bridge filled by bias. The green is a supposition. And the orange is something to alleviate the leap in belief. Now, this is a portion of our Bayesian network that shows you how all this eventuates. Our, the entire network was act, it's actually bigger. But this is, this is all the interesting bits. So we have the part that fills the gap, the supposition, and the explanatory extension that makes people happy. OK, so this is what we're aiming to generate. The question is, well, how? And this is where my exposure to minimum message length comes in. But when I say I'm exposed, I mean at the level of the end user. So what we want is to select the model, that maxima, the maximal probability model given the data. And if we do the base voodoo that we all do, you get that. And how does it relate to our situation? Our model is an interpretation which is what I've just explained. And that argument is what the person actually says. So what interpretation do we want? The one that maximizes this entire probability. Now, the first factor is the probability that the user said a particular thing when he intended this interpretation. And the second is the prior of the interpretation. So now the only thing left is how do we calculate this stuff? And I won't go through any math. It's all pictures. What we have is an argument, what the user said. And we have some background knowledge. In our background knowledge, we have two elements, a Bayesian network and people's preferences. What I said before, the things that people found, find tasteful or distasteful when presented arguments. And we have a candidate interpretation, which is a, a Bayesian subnet, plus another piece of the subnet that may be an explanatory extension, plus suppositions. We want to calculate the prior probability of that interpretation given the background. And we want to calculate how well that interpretation fits the argument. Together, they tell you how probable this interpretation is. OK, so how do we play this game? Again, this is our background knowledge. And we have a whole bunch of candidates emerging. And the way we calculate the prior is we have two factors. We have structure and we have belief. So the structure is how probable is each of these structures in the context of the Bayesian network down there. And an easy way to think of this is, OK, what's the probability of selecting those nodes and those links from that network? And you can just do combinatorics if you want. We also did combinatorics and salience, but that's a longer story. So that's for structure. For belief is, again, how well do the beliefs in these little networks match those in the background knowledge? And for that, we're actually referring ourselves to people's preferences. The beliefs 
match the Bayesian network perfectly, they are obtained by Bayesian propagation. But people's preferences, if we have one of those leaps that people find offensive, then they do not match people's preferences. So both of these factors have to be taken into account when estimating the probability of these interpretations. So now we go to data fit. OK, so we have one of those candidate interpretations, and we want to know how well it fits an argument. Again, we go back to structures and beliefs. You want to know, the way you match structure is you say, well, how much work do I need to do to convert that green stuff to that orange stuff? I mean, how do I manipulate this? How many edit distance, if you will? How do you match belief? Well, how close is the belief, be is the match between what was said and what actually I obtained by Bayesian propagation? And I get the probability for data fit. So these are the main elements of the model. And now we go to the Reader's Digest version of the evaluation. We evaluate, this was developed chronologically over several years. So we evaluated our interpretations graph, interpretation graphs separately. And to evaluate anything, you have to go to people. You show them arguments, you show them interpretations, you ask them how they like them. You actually have to talk to human beings. And it is kind of a person with a smirk. It's not quite a smile. And why is he smirking? Because people said, yeah, it's OK, but we have problems. What problems did they have? The beliefs didn't quite match. They found the inferences, these leaps, offensive. I'm saying we're just evaluating interpretation graphs. And that's what prompted us to develop the further aspect. Then we evalu evaluated our suppositions. That went down very well. People were very happy with our suppositions. And we also evaluated our explanatory extensions. And again, people were very happy with how those affected the interpretations. So. What did we do? We have a probabilistic approach to argument interpretation in the context of a Bayesian network. And now to go to the gap between theory and reality, yes, there is a lot of gaps. Uh, first of all, our Bayesian network nodes are binary. That makes development easy. Uh, but we need to make this practical, it has to be extended to non-binary nodes. Domain of argumentation. OK, that was a bit difficult. My intellectual heritage and also ease of implementation pointed me to uh, murder mystery. But the problem with murder mysteries is that everybody is an expert, much more so than the computer. So people were coming up with all sorts of things that had no nodes in the Bayesian network. What if Mr. Green and Miss Scarlet were in cahoots? No, we have no node for that. Sorry, you cannot do that. <laughs> And uh, so that leads us to think that perhaps an expert domain might be better than a murder mystery, or if somebody comes up with a clever way of adding notes that we didn't know about. Bayesian reasoning versus human reasoning. First of all, people could be thinking along completely different lines, or people have reasoning fallacies that are not Bayesian. That's another thing that should be taken into account. And finally, interfaces. We tried two opposite ends. Neither of them worked. One end was a menu-based interface. We said, no, no, our system only knows these things. You cannot talk about anything else. And people were really, really annoyed. They said, no, 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 I, I cannot go looking at all the things you know about until I find something that matches what I'm thinking. So then we tried natural language and adult, tried an information retrieval approach where you say, OK, say, type in whatever you want, and we'll try to match it up. That didn't work either. So all these problems have to be addressed before people can actually talk to their Bayesian network. But eventually, I think they should be able to talk to their Bayesian networks so that they can understand each other. So that's it. Thanks. Thank